morning, it's morning, right? Yes. Oh. I'm happy, I'm happy to be here. Are you happy? That's a wonderful morning. And you're joining us online so that we can study the word of God. I am super grateful that you're joining us today. My name is just Celestine. And you know what? Jesus is my friend. Is Jesus your friend? I believe so. All right. So we are back again to study the word of God. Um, we continue with our series, the theme, the God who knows my heart. And today we see a very interesting story of David jo uh, showing kindness to a very young person who had a challenge when he was five years old. So join me today in class and let us learn the word of God. You're most welcome. So as we go for a short break, please grab your Bible, grab your notebook, grab your pen, and let us study the Word of God together. See you shortly. All right. Welcome back to class, everybody. Do you have your Bible ready? I hope so. Do you have your notebook ready? I hope so. Do you have your pen? All right. If you don't have those things, please run and get them. Yes. So last week we learned that there was a friend who was called Jonathan. And his friend was David. And I did ask you, do you have a friend like that? I do. And then my friend, in fact, two of my friends, sent me their greetings. You know who they are? Teacher Jesse. You remember Teacher Jesse? Yes. Teacher, che uh, teacher Jesse and Teacher Carol. Teacher Carol and Teacher Jesse said I sent their greetings to you, right? All right. I'll have them back very soon. Okay. Let us pray before we go to the lesson. Our dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so, so much for this wonderful day. You have brought us again to hear your word. Father, our hearts are expectant. Our minds are inclined to you, dear Lord, just to listen to what you have to tell us today. As we read your word, our God, verse by verse, line by line, may your Holy Spirit, who is our teacher, teach us the hidden and great things in your word. Father, we surrender our hearts to you this morning that we may uh, listen from you and hear from you, O oh God. May your presence be with us from the beginning of the lesson to the end of this lesson. Father, we will glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen and amen. All right. So today we continue with our series, The, uh, the God Who Knows Our Heart. And today we focus on the kindness of God. What are we doing, children? The kindness of God. Let us see how David was able to be kind to someone in the Bible. What is the name of that person? Go with me to the book of 2 Samuel. Where we were last week, we were in the book of 1 Samuel. So today, just go ahead a little bit. The book of 2 Samuel, chapter number 9. Chapter number 9. We we'll read from verse 1. Going forward, but I'll read very fast. All right. The Bible tells us. Now, um, after, uh, let me give a summary. After, after David had now taken reign as the king of Israel. You remember we said last week that um, King Saul had his son, uh, Jonathan, died in the battle when the when Philistines had come to wage war with the children of Israel. So the King Saul. And Jonathan were killed. But remember, children, Jonathan also had a, a family and he had a child. And this child was called Mephi Boshet. Hey, it's a long name. Can you say with me? Maybe for shit. Maybe for shit. All right. Now, the Bible says David asked, Is there anyone still left in the house of Saul? 
in whom I can show kindness for Jonathan. Sick. You remember David and Jonathan had a covenant and they said they will protect themselves. They will take care of themselves. And the Bible told us Jonathan loved David like his own brother. He loved David like he loved himself. In fact, he, the Bible says he loved, his spirit was with him. The spirit of Jonathan was with David because they loved each other very, very, very much. And also David loved uh, Jonathan very much. And their friendship was so close, such that when Saul wanted to kill David, Jonathan will tell him all the plot, he will tell him all the secret, and he will tell him to run away and hide. And that is why David uh, did, did manage to hide from Saul because of the friendship they had with Jonathan. So children, David asked, is there anyone left in the house of Saul in whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now, there was a servant of Saul's household named Ziba. He was named who? Ziba. They summoned him to appear before David, and the king said to him, Are you Ziba? Ziba used to work uh, in the house of Saul when Saul and Jonathan were alive, so he was their servant. So, verse 3, I, I, are you, uh, at your service, Ziba replied. The king asked, is, is there still no one? Oh, is there no one still alive from the house of Saul in whom I can show God's kindness? David wanted to show what? God's kindness. David wanted to show God's kindness. Ziba answered, the king, the still a son of Jonathan, he is lame on both feet. Where is he? The king asked. Ziba answered, he is at the house of Maki, the son of Amiel, Diba. So, King David had him brought from Lord Diba, from the house of Maki, son of Amiel. So when Mephibosheth, son, son of Jonathan, who is now the son of Saul, came to David, he bowed uh, down to, uh, to pay him honor. David said, Maybe for me, Mephibosheth, at your service, he replied, do not be afraid. David said to him, for surely I will show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather Saul, and you always eat at my table. Mephibosheth bowed down and said, What is your servant that you should uh, treat? No, notice a dead dog like me. The king summoned Siba, so steward, and said to him, I have given you, master's grandson, everything that belongs to Saul and his family, and your sons and your servants are from the farmland, and you bring the crops so that your master's grandson may be provided for. One thing I want to tell us children today is that now when um, the war was over and the Philistines have, 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 have been fighting uh, the children of Israel, their king has died, Jonathan has died, people were so afraid and they were running away. They didn't know what will happen to their country now that the honor was not there. So there was this lady who is a nurse who was taking care of was taking care of Mephibosheth, who is the son of the son of Jonathan. So when they heard that the war had been, uh, the children of Israel had been uh, been fighting and they have been defeated, they didn't know what was going to happen to them. They ran. So this nurse ran because his her work was to take care of the child. Her work was to take care of the child. And this child is the son of Jonathan. He was only five years old. So we're in the process of running, he slipped out of his hands and he, he hurt his legs. He hurt his two legs and he was crippled. When they were running, running like this, can we run together? Yes, when they were running, he slipped because he was too heavy. Can you imagine a five-year-old? Mm-hmm. 
they are too heavy. So he was too heavy. He slipped and he hurt. He hurt his legs. So and that is why he became a cripple. Now we said and we have learned from the Bible that after the death of Jonathan and his father, now it was time for David to be anointed king. It was time to be anointed king. And you see David being anointed? Yes, that is David being anointed as the king of Israel because he had been waiting and trusting on God. So once the king was now the king of Israel, he remembered, do, 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 do you keep promises? I do keep a promise. If I promise you something, I will keep a promise. Now here, children, when you see from this picture, David remembered his promise to Jonathan. You remember the promise they made to each other? That we will not leave each other. We will always be friends. We will always protect one another. Even for us children, God requires us to keep our promises. Don't pr I promise something that you will not keep. It does not please God. Right, children? Yes. So when you make a promise, make sure you fulfill the promise. So here David remembered their times with Jonathan. And he said, I promised Jonathan. And it is now time for me to pay back. Now, we have read from the word of God that there was a servant in the house of Saul. And his name was Ziba. You remember Ziba? Yes. So Ziba comes and he meets the king. And the king asks him, is there anyone in the house of uh, Jonathan that I may show God's kindness? Yes, children, even as God wants us to show other people kindness. So how do you, how are you kind? Be kind by helping other people. Be kind by uh, just being good to your friends. Don't shout at them when they come to your house. Please don't tell them to go away or um, talk to them with mean words. That is how we can show kindness to others. If you're, you're in a position to help, maybe you have three pairs of shoes that you're not using. Please show other people kindness. And here... Uh, David is talking to this man called Ziba and tells him, please go and look for anyone in Jonathan's family that whom I can show kindness. So how did David show kindness? So they went and brought a crippled man. Do you remember the crippled man? Yes, the crippled man is now here, Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth, we, we, the Bible tells us he was crippled at age five. When they were running away, being afraid of what would happen to them, he, he injured his, he limbs. Now he comes to David and he's is, is just, you know, he's a cripple and he can't even stand and he's coming before the king. And he's demeaning himself that, you know, I am like a dog in your presence. But no, David said no. I will show you kindness and you will stay in my palace and everything that belonged to your parents from the farmland, from the animals, everything, I will give it back to you. David was showing God's kindness and he said from today, you will always stay in the palace and eat from the table of the king. And Mephibosheth was so surprised that he was now in the table of the king. And guess what? This is what happened to Mephibosheth. He was now able to eat in the table of the king and just be in the house of the king. And everything that belonged to his father was given back to him. So children, just like David, the way he showed, kindness to Mephibosheth, we are also to show God's kindness to others. Be kind to others all the time. From this day forward, Mephibosheth uh, got the 
best treatment. His life was forever changed and he was always found in the palace. So even for us children, God can change our lives. Sometimes our lives are not the way we want, but God is able to make a turn around. God is able to make a turn around. God is able to change our lives to be the way he wants us to be because he's a kind is a kind God. So today, just like David, may you show God's kindness to other people, to your friends, to your cousins, to your mommy, daddy, grandparents, anyone around you. Let us show God's kindness just the way David did to Mephibosheth. Right, children? Yes. So we are saying today, we are showing God's kindness. What are we showing, children? God's kindness. Yes, we are showing God's kindness. All right. I'm going to teach you a memory verse. Before we go to giving, let us do our memory verse of today. And that is my favorite part because I get to hide the word of God in my heart. All right, children. Go to go to the book of Ephesians. <laughs> Sorry, go with me to the book of Ephesians. Now, Ephesians, <laughs> Ephesians is in the New Testament. It's where? In the New Testament, just almost the end of the Bible. So go almost to the end of the Bible. Ephesians is after Galatians. So when you get Galatians, Ephesians, is almost right there. <laughs> and then after Ephesians is Gal uh, Philippians. Okay. <coughs> so Ephesians 4, verse 32. Say with me, Ephesians 4, 32. Ephesians 4, 32, the Bible says, be kind and compassionate. Be what? Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ forgave you. Be kind and compassionate, forgiving one another just as Christ forgave you. Let's do that one more time. Ephesians 4, 32. Ephesians 4, 32. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ forgave you. Ephesians 4, 32. Did you get that? I hope you will not forget. Ephesians 4, 32. Be kind and compassionate to one another, just as Christ forgave you. Just as Christ forgave you. All right. I hope you'll keep memorizing that. Until next Sunday, I'll come and ask you if you've got the memory verse of today. But what lesson are we learning today? Be kind, right? Show God's kindness to someone else just the way David did show kindness to Mephibosheth in the Bible. Thank you so so much children for joining us today. It's that time of the hour where we give to God. What are we doing? We are giving to God and we're giving to God a good offering. So tell mommy and daddy to give an offering on your behalf. Pay bill is 30, 30, 36. Account is offering. Pay bill, 30, 30, 36. Account is offering. All right. Let's give a good offering to God because God has shown us his kindness and God has forgiven our sins. So in return, we give him thanks. And how do we give him thanks? with a sacrifice 
uh, so that we are able to reach many more children, right? Yes, children. We are able to pay the bills. We are able to do so many things and let this message and the Bible, the word of God can reach so many other children like you. All right. Okay. So it's been wonderful being online with you. I want us to pray. And then I'll see you again next Sunday. All right, children. Okay. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that you have been with us. You have taught us your word, O oh God, that today we will learn, we have learned to be kind, to show your kindness to other people, just like David showed kindness to Mephibosheth. And this week, Father Lord, may you help us to show your kindness to other children in school, to other children in our neighborhood, to our friends, dear Father. In whatever space we are in, O oh God, may you help us to show your kindness to other people and help them where we can, O oh God. Father, we bless you and we honor you. Thank you because even the memory verse of the day demands us that we are kind and compassionate to one another. Just the way you are kind to us and you have forgiven our sins, Lord, may you send us out this week to be kind and compassionate to one another. Father, we bless you want to thank you so much for the offerings that your people have given. I speak a blessing upon their lives that God may you increase them in every way. May you bless the work of their hands, O oh God. May you bless the crops in their farms and everything their hands um, finds to do, dear Lord. May you bless it. Father, we honor you. We want to thank you for these children who are watching us online that you may continue to inspire them and even teach them your word, O oh God. May your Holy Spirit minister to each and every one of them in a special way today. And may they encounter Jesus in everything that they do. Father, we bless you and we honor you. For we pray, trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, children. Thank you. It's been a pleasure learning the word of God with you. Until next Sunday, I want to say bye-bye. Bye and may God bless you. Thank you once again.